Okay. Uh, thank you very much for this uh, introduction to current methods. Um, of course. Some, uh, some technical issues on our end uh, were sometimes hard to understand, but um, oh. I hope oh, okay. not a problem for the, for the online joiners. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, also, uh, thank you very much for these very polished uh, um, uh, slides. So I know this is a hard work. <laughs> So let's open this up to uh, general questions from the audience. I saw already a, a, a hand raised. Yeah, let me, I will, I will quickly stop my picture yeah. that I can see the hands. Yeah. Yeah, Daniel, maybe you can uh, moderate that because when I, when I, when I share the, the screen, I think I, I cannot see the, the raised hand. Yeah. Okay, the go ahead, please. Okay, uh, so my question is uh, what I have uh, experienced using GP the regression that uh, for uh, high dimensional data, the efficiency or accuracy is not, efficiency is not uh, high. So it works well for low dimensional um, data. So, what is your take on this? How to handle this problem using GP regression? Yeah, uh, that's a yeah, that's pretty general. So, um, well, the thing is, um, in in high dimensional space, um, you have this curse of dimensionality, right? Where um, if you go to high dimensions, basically everything is far away. So this notion of local similarity has less and less value if you increase the dimension so i would guess uh, you would need more more data if you have high dimensional settings or a more expressive kernel so it's it's a little bit hard to to answer just by this statement yeah, I, I just like to know this because we are, we have experience this problem when we have high dimensional data with GP irrigation. So, what is your dimensionality? It is it is around uh, two thousand features. Two thousand. Okay. Yeah. So I have used um, a GP model um, just to some some uh, ballpark figures for. Um, a data set which has several thousand points, so eight thousand, and I was, and the dimensionality is ninety something, okay. um, and I was able to get uh, pretty good models with using half the data, half the data or a little bit less. So, but half, so four thousand points and around hundred dimensions using the the RBF kernel worked worked well. So, but this is this is one sample point. Right? But two thousand, I have no experience with GPS in these uh, settings. Okay, thank you. So, may I, may I comment on that? So, so, I mean, you may should look for keywords like compress sensing or ASO techniques. I mean, the whole thing is. In the end, that you have, let's say, less 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 data than features, and um, and and it's all about how to still have a have a feasible regression which gives you a Gaussian process model for for your data, and um, you can you can add constraints on the regression, right? And and uh, and with that, uh, so for instance, like like a L1 lasso, which means I want to have a model which which uh, which has as many zeros in the in the Gaussian kernels as I, I I can get. So make it as simple as possible. So so, so I mean I'm, I'm not so familiar with, with Gaussian process in this sense, but so but so assume you have a have a have a um, a data set where you want to fit a polynomial in one D. Okay. And you have, let's say, a uh, hundred. Um, no, yeah, you you have um, 
100 uh, degrees or 100 uh, coefficients you want to find, but you only have, let's say, 50 samples, so 50 data points. And if you add a L1 constraint uh, and do a regression with respect to that, you would find a polynomial model which has as many zeros as possible in the coefficients and still fitting your model, even though you have yeah, not enough data really given. And there's a bunch of whole of such theories how to assign additional constraints on, on the regression, which you also need here in the Gaussian process to, to get such problems solved. I mean, if you have enough data, even for high problems as Steve stated, then you may be lucky. But if you have less data, right, then you have features or you're in this regime, then such additional constraints are needed. Yeah, that's an interesting point. I haven't seen, or I'm not aware of a method to introduce L1 regularization in GPs. So the, um, what I showed, maybe it wasn't too, too clear. The, the noise uh, assumption in the GP um, <clears throat> amounts to being the same as having a L2 regularization in the kernel regression. So if you have a, a, a regularized regression setup with L2, uh, with, this is the same as assuming the, the noise in the, in the GP. And I wouldn't know how to introduce any other um, regularization in a GP. There are probably papers out there that I totally don't know. Um, yeah, so that's a, that's a... There are a bunch of, of such things. I'm not an expert that I just said that the keywords to look at that. So compress sensing, lasso techniques, L1 constraints, regularization, then one probably finds something and what one can combine to set up here. What you could also try <clears throat> is to analyze your data and do some uh, feature Im importance analysis. So it might be that even though you have 2000 features, they are a they are highly correlated or they are not expressive at all. So maybe <clears throat> um, you you find that you can express <clears throat> um, the the main bulk of the information contained in your data with much less features if you do um, an analysis. So this might be another way, but it's it's hard to speak generally. Okay, yeah. the other questions, I think we are a little bit over time, right? I planned for 45 minutes, of course it didn't work out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so right now I don't see any other questions. Here. No problem. My, my voice is also starting to fail a little bit. I think. <clears throat> okay. Uh, I think we are done. So thank you again. Thank you very much. And uh, bye. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Yeah.